We have a very special guest today, Dr. Louise Marin. She is a veterinary dentistry specialist in Colorado and possibly one of my most special guests because she's actually my cousin. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. I'm so glad to join you today. Oh, thank you for coming. Well, it's so great to see you. And I actually am so excited to ask you some questions about dentistry because I haven't done dentistry in so long. And the little I did at one point doesn't really even count, I would say, as being called dentistry. More of just giving her the good old college try. <laughs> 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 some of that for all of us at some point. <laughs> if I never have to pull another tooth in my life, I'll be just fine with that. So let's talk about you. Okay. Well, I am a general practitioner still. So I graduated from veterinary school in 2006. So I've been at it for a fair bit of time. And when I started working, I realized how much need there was in terms of dental health and how little I actually knew what needed to be done. I felt a lot like you, so it felt oh. terrible. And so I decided to educate myself and one thing led to another and I pursued board certification, which was a long winding journey. And eventually I achieved that certification. So there's a small group of veterinarians who have done the work to get exposure to a broad set of cases in terms of all the different disciplines within dentistry, which encompass endodontics, which are like root canals, orthodontics, which isn't a pretty smile like it is in people. It has more to do with comfort and function. Um, surgery and prosthodontics, we actually put crowns on teeth sometimes. So there's all these different categories and you have to then do all the reading of all the literature that's been written so you can take a written exam and it's a pretty cumbersome process. But in any case, there's a small handful of veterinarians that have achieved that certification. And so you introduced me as a board certified dentist. That's what that means is that initial lack of education led me to dedicate a lot of energy to getting the knowledge that I needed to do a good job at it because it's its whole own thing that we actually don't get taught in vet school. Yeah, when you get your license, you're licensed as a veterinarian to perform medicine, dentistry, and surgery. And I can say when I walked in the door of my first job, I could do none of those competently. And dentistry was always the one where it just naturally for me, it was not easy. I remember actually, we were both veterinarians at the time and you were waking up before 5 a.m. every morning studying before you went to work. Then when you got home, you would study again. And I was like, that is crazy. <laughs> but I'm so crazy. It went on for a decade, <laughs> sadly. Right. That's hard, but look where you are now. Yeah, I'm actually in the same place, <laughs> but I feel a lot better about what I do. So it was worth it. Oh, I was going to say, when you're talking about crowns and stuff like that, my limited experience with that is when I worked in emergency at Canada West and the police dogs would come in and those were like all-star moments. They would come in with so many police cars <laughs> escorting them, the RCMP and their heroes. When there's a robbery going on, they break the window and they send the dog in and the dog does the takedown and takes down all the bad guys. So they're so valuable and so special. And when they come in, they always have their handler with them. And yeah, there would be so many RCMP when these dogs would come in. Sometimes they would get stabbed or injured <clears throat> in the line of duty. And a lot of them had titanium growth from the dentist because they can't afford to lose their canines when they break. Yeah, those dogs, you know, a lot of us think of animals as pets and most of them are, but there are definitely a handful of animals that are hardworking service members that serve the public. And yeah. I have a few of those types of trained dogs that come through. So that's definitely an honor to be able to honor. provide their dental care. Yeah, it was always so special when we would have patients that had really bad fractures in their face. We would always get veterinary dentistry specialists involved. They would the CT scan and basically reconstruct their jaw so that they could have a functional bite and all their teeth would align. There's some really, really cool technology at play now with CT scanners and the 3D imaging and 3D printing. They use that to like know how to mold the plate so then the, wow. when they go in to make their incision, they already have the plate that's perfectly shaped for the jaw that they're going to put it on. Wow. And 
Yeah, there's a lot of really cool technology. That's in more places like UC Davis or some of these universities that have kind of all these multiple teams, like they've got the engineers and the doctors and everybody kind of working together. It's amazing. So that's kind of one of the things about dentistry is that I think in general, the public thinks that a veterinary dentist must just clean teeth because Mm. that's kind of like the... I don't think that. I don't think Mm -hmm. that because I've I've been in an emergency where we saw these little dogs getting their faces crushed in the mouths of larger dogs in car doors. And Mm. I saw the CTs where their faces and their skulls looked like broken eggs with fragments of bones protruding into their airway and their entire maxilla fragments. And uh-huh. yeah, they would get Dr. Loic Legendre and his team yeah. to come and work together and basically put them back together. Seeing their work was just astonishing. And in our department, people would say that watching them work was like watching neurosurgery work. Like they were just so, so good. So I've always had kind of a shroud of mystery around what happens in your specialty. Yes, Dr. Legendre is definitely legendary. Yep, he's good. It's a small group, as I mentioned in my intro. So most of us know each other's names. My best day is to actually just clean teeth. What I mostly do is surgery to treat teeth that have become very diseased and infected. And at that point, now you're increasing the cost and traumatizing the patient. And that's unfortunately where most animals get to before they get a trip to the dentist. So my plea is just to pursue prophylactic care and take your pet in for a dental cleaning before the vet says, oh my gosh, this mouth is so infected and I'm going to have to do a bunch of surgery to fix it. You know, there is a cost associated with anesthesia and with the care behind a professional cleaning, but it will save your pet surgical trauma. And in the long run, it will save your wallet to get that prophylactic care and not wait for things to be in need of actual treatment. Is there veterinary dentistry in most places? No? That's a good question. I think yes, there are veterinary dentists in most states, but you may only have one or two, like in an entire state. And then there are pockets that are more concentrated, like Colorado, for some reason, has like 15 plus. (laughs) Florida has a lot. But I think Utah maybe only has one or two. Wyoming, I don't think, has any. It can sometimes be a long trip to see one, yeah. 